Today I'm at Mojas Art in New Delhi and I'm sitting with Anubhav Nath. Hi Vasros, thank you for being How here. How are you? Good, how are you? Good with you at your beautiful gallery. Thank you so much. And I hate, I'm very ashamed to admit it, but it's my first time here. That's it's so good. Gorgeous. Better late than never. Better late than never. Yeah. And um, you can tell a little bit about yourself because your gallery specializes in how do you like to define it? Tribal, indigenous? Uh, indigenous contemporary art. Indigenous contemporary art, okay. And how long has the gallery been open? So we've had the, the gallery been there for about six, seven years now. Okay. But before that, I would uh, do projects at independent spaces like, uh, you know, Lalit Kala Academy, IGNC, those kinds of things that I do So I've been actively in the art scene, so to say, for more than 10 years now. Okay. And yeah, but having opening a gallery and having a permanent space. And how did you develop your interest in indigenous contemporary? So this happened about, I want to say six years back, six, seven years ago, when uh, I met some artists at, uh, some indigenous artists, some god artists, at, uh, at uh, Habitat Center. And you know, I was just going through their works and everything, and I really felt that there was, there was a great lack of, uh, gallery representation slash professional help for these artists. So that's how it started and then I just, uh, I spoke to the folks at the Jeppo Literature Festival and they were very keen that we do something with them. So we instituted an award, which is the oh. Ojas Art Award, oh, okay. which is every year we explore one genre and we've already completed five editions. So 2020 is going to be our sixth one. So how do you how do you precisely define um, contemporary tribal? Because I know that tribal artists used to do these sort of paintings, these beautiful, mm -hmm. these are gone, yes. These are gone, this, this is gone. Gone. They, 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 they used to do them on the walls of their right. homes, right. of their village. Right. And then at some point they were transferred over to canvas, and I think Swami. Yes, J. Swami Nathan has a lot to do, do with it. So does Papul Jaikar. Okay. All of them are, you can say, pivotal in getting these uh, uh, this work onto paper and canvases that can travel from one place to another. So it could become more collectible. More collectible, more, 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 more transportable, more, more collectible. And, uh, you know, so to come to that, so I have to say that it's, it's a very interesting genre where the tradition itself is thousands of years old. You know, we can say one of those things like older than time itself or as yeah, old as time. Right. But having said that, the this being on paper or transportable material, the history is not more than 50 years old. Right. So which makes it very interesting that we're talking about a tradition which is thousands of years old. But the trans the it being taken from one place to the other is just 50 years old. Right, right, right. And so uh, it's like uh, it's it's like it's almost like a paradigm. You know, so it makes it even more interesting in that sense. And uh, so I was telling about the Jaipur Literature Festival, so we have the Ojas Art Award then, okay. where every year we explore one genre of the tribal or traditional arts. Uh, coming to those geopolitical terms a little later as to what they mean in different places in the world. I know you're very opinionated. Uh, yeah, I am. And this is something I, apparently this is also a big thing with American Western scholars, American and Western scholars, where, you know, these definitions of uh, Indigenous, tribal, traditional, folk, all these definitions are like different in different places. And uh, I started off by saying that I was into tribal and traditional art. And then I have kind of now come under the contemporary indigenous art umbrella. And I'll tell you why I say that and what makes sense. Well, you know, I myself, I've kind of tried, consciously trying to give up on using the word contemporary. Uh -huh. Because contemporary now seems to be a sort of a branded thing. So everybody associates it with a right. certain type of style yeah, so of art, a certain political right. mindset. Do you understand what so there are two things to it. As in contemporary is a, it's just like modern, right? right? A lot of people use modern art as something that's new, whereas modern actually clearly defines an era. So similarly with contemporary, I think the root the, the root meaning of the word contemporary is of our times. Right. So everything is like this contemporary but fashion. But the, word, the word's been hijacked. Yeah, so there are two words. Two words. They made yes. it for specific So right. it should be contemporary urban art. Yeah. Right? I've, then, been, I've been using the term current art. Current, current art, art also. Yeah. Yeah. That includes, that includes yeah. contemporary yeah. art. Includes so the art, 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 art
know yeah, all that kind of thing. So I think it's three words that are high, uh, three terms that are highly misused in the art world are contemporary, curator, yes, and cutting edge. Oh yeah. Yeah, cutting edge. I think it's cutting edge is sort of going out of fashion. But it's been there for a while, right? So maybe now it's on its way out. I hate it when people talk about video art as cutting edge. Right. I grew up in the US, everybody was doing video art right. in the 1970s. You know, you know, <laughs> but cutting edge is something that's, cutting edge is used internationally. Right. Maybe in the West now you can say it's been out for a little bit, so like, you know, it's just going to uh, take a little bit more time before it goes out in India. But generally speaking, when I hear the word cutting edge gallerist, cutting edge artist, that just like, it's like, like you know, like, it's like, it's like, it's like someone's like scratching me, you know, it's like one of those irritants uh, it's a word that I have. It's a word that a lot of journalists like to use. Yes. Like and a lot of galleries also. Yes. And a lot of galleries also love to use it, but it's a cutting edge audience, you know. So yeah, it's sort of like a word that's not understandable and it's too ugly to hang on your wall, but then it's cutting edge. I'd be really mean, now that's the evil wall. I'd be killing <laughs> <laughs> You've come to the right place. <laughs> so, in terms of, can you, can you mm -hmm. just get off that subject? Can you tell us a little bit about um, some of the artists you represent? Maybe so, you know, I. Uh, so, I work very. So, the other thing is, I want to uh, say is that uh, I still work in the urban arts, in the contemporary urban art okay. category. It's not that I've uh, stopped working in that because that's when I started. Right. That's when I started my gallery. And uh, having said that, I really want to, uh, and I think it's also important that these bridges be gapped. You know, like right now when you mention something that what's, that you like to use the current art, it covers, it encompasses everything. Right. You know, your contemporary urban, it encompasses Gaon, Verli, Mithila, Madhubani, all of that, right? right? So in the same way, I feel that there is a big gap between the, uh, between the current indigenous artists and the current uh, contemporary artists, like the mainstream contemporary artists, as I like to call them. So, but it's important that 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 gap be bridged. And then Swami Nathan was trying to do that. Swami Nathan was just like, the yes, that was his original intention. Yeah, and then, and, uh, oh, boy, yes, right. and then a lot of uh, you know the the uh, the Bharat Bhavan in Bhopal is testimony to that. It stands as homage to that right. because you have works by the best known Indian modern artist hanging uh, alongside works by, at that time, completely unknown indigenous artists. Right. You know, so it's all like in the same room together. Yeah, and you know, people misunderstand me because people think I like them. Oh, I'm misunderstood people, all the time. People think I don't like contemporary art, uh -huh. you know, the brand and the start. I actually do. Mm -hmm. I do enjoy a lot of that stuff. I love the Kochi Biennale. Yeah, but absolutely. Stuff. But what I, I have to use the word resent, mm -hmm. what I resent a little bit is that people like this or like me and other sorts and kind of get excluded mm -hmm. because we're not using particular mediums, we're not addressing particular social right. issues, whatever. Right. And then it's like, well, we don't fit under contemporary art, but to me, this is contemporary. Yeah, and this is, you know, in fact, right now, this right. it happens to be that the exhibition that's going on right now, it's, uh, it's titled A Message from the Trees. And it is about trees and nature and, you know, you've run, we walk through the gallery when you see that it's a lot of the works are making a political statement. You know, they are basically saying that we need to save the trees. Now you put it in a sexy way where you're like, oh, the, is it like completely environmental? And you have like some artists going over the top with it. And you know, I appreciate that our practice. I'm not criticizing that. But what I'm saying is, this too has its place, and it's one needs like to the, appreciate the, the it for what it is. Of this exactly the aesthetic of it. And the, the, tree. the other thing I always say is, uh, I believe in, is that uh, uh, the Indian aesthetic is grounded in our indigenous arts. Because that is the real Indian aesthetic. It's like right. the untrained, unlearned Indian aesthetic. Right. You know, when you talk about MSU Baroda students and all of those, like those, that kind of stuff, that's more, that's trained. That's very trained. This is the immediate, this is the natural immune aesthetic, I would say. Right, I would, I would agree to some extent. I mean, there was a merging of the Western aesthetic came in right. through the Brits, mm -hmm. and it got picked up, you know, mm -hmm. company school paintings and all of that, and Robbie Barnes, sure. and all of that. But I feel like, um, you know, when you mentioned Baroda, when I see so many students there, 
they're so into this, it becomes very generic type of art. And it's all very Western influence. And it's when you look back to the traditions that you know, so the thing is, I like amalgamation when you talk about when you talk about Shanti Niketan, Shanti Niketan celebrating 100 years this year, the art the art school there. And so they 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 speak about all the different techniques, you know, they talk about the Japanese art and the Chinese calligraphy and all of that and how it's like uh, had an influence on everything and they taught all those that was a part of their curriculum. Right. So that so you know having those influences is good. As in there's nothing wrong in that because you're picking up things from there. But having said that, the, there is a basic aesthetic sense which remains. What do you think about what people like up in around Tribor uh -huh. for was he on the right track, did you think? So yes, absolutely. Yes, hundred yes. percent. Even let's talk about like Raja Ravi You know, I I have a collection of his um, decorated oleographs, the ones with the zari work, the zardozi work. Those are beautiful. We almost yeah. filmed them actually, but then we thought that we better stick with the tribal background because it fits better. So you know, when you talk about Raja Ravi Varma, I think there cannot be another artist. Oh, uh, sorry. Let me reframe that. The standard that he set, the benchmark that he set for being an influential artist, for influencing people, is so high that it will not be easy for another artist to even come close to that. And why do I say that? Because when Hindus across the world, across the globe, when they close their eyes and they imagine Saraswati and Lakshmi, the main goddesses, what they're imagining is a Ravi Varma imagery without even knowing that. Without necessarily knowing that that this that Ravi Varma is the man who made this, you know, and it's just hundred years, hundred hundred and twenty years. Before that, the imagery was. I had that different. in my photography because I was doing a series based on Krishna. Uh -huh. And when I started doing Krishna, my rickshaw wala was a part-time assistant at the time, mm -hmm. and his name was Tara. And he got quite upset for a while. I was like, no, no, Krishna has to be a little child, a little child. Right. You know, right. the butter pots have to be up here, child, right. up here. Right. And it was obviously was totally relating mm -hmm. to the, the calendar of the Rabi yeah. Varma. Yeah. So can you imagine the kind of influence that one artist has had in those two images? Just the Lakshmi and Saraswati. I'm not even going into the entire. Uh, my, the pantheon that he's created. I'm just talking about Lakshmi and Saraswati. Right. Because that is how people imagine Lakshmi and Saraswati. So, just shifting the, the yeah. conversation yeah. a little bit again, but um, going back to the mm -hmm. um, tribal artists, the contemporary tribal artists, excuse uh -huh. me. Um, I like what, what do you say to people who are like, well, you know, this is corrupt, their tradition, and blah, blah, blah. To me, that always seems bogus because do you expect them to starve? I mean, of course, uh -huh. they, they had to mutate, they had to go to canvas and right. do new paints. And Absolutely, and why not? Stuff. Why not? You know, my, my answer to that is why not? Right. When uh, contemporary artists, like mainstream contemporary urban artists, are, are using, are exploring different mediums, when, you know, paint, uh, painterly artists are completely switching over to photography right. and using uh, distorted images and things. Why not over here? It's like it's completely, and it's it's uh, they're they're exercising their creativity. Oh yeah. So why I should love, it be just kind of art because it's just um, it's so full of like myth and archetype, mm -hmm. and it's it's very it's surrealist, but not like in a Dali sort of way. Uh -huh. it's surrealist, and I I use the term tribal dreams, uh -huh. sort of a tribal right. dream, like you know, like the uh, the Aboriginal. Right, yeah, so yeah. The dream there was a really, there was a, a there was a really good exhibition of theirs that came to the NGMA right. last year. The Australian Aboriginal artists. I you can see that. I've like, seen it in Australia. In the past. Right. But and what the Australians have done with their Aboriginal art, with focused promotion, with focused, uh, with very strong support to the audience, is phenomenal. Right, and it's it's, it's really the opposite of here because yeah. when I was in Australia. A lot of the contemporary artists in Australia, they complain mm -hmm. that the Aboriginal art got all the attention, yeah, yeah. all the attention. Nobody said, knows who the Having said that, what's with that is it only started in the 1970s. Yeah. They had, of course, they did some work like 100 years ago where they created some, again, yeah. some Brits got some works created and they took them around a little bit. But like concentrated work to like explore and promote that as a sector started only in the 1970s. And you wonder why that hasn't happened in India. Why, why it's, uh, I can see why it's not happening. I can see why it's not happening. The one thing is that it's also 
that the traditional arts or the indigenous arts in India are also seen as craft. Yes. You know, and there is too much of repetition. You know, and one has to also remember that our the Indian art school or the Indian system of training stems from uh, from copy art. Yes. You know, when they are taught, it's you see the same thing with the miniature. Painting. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. with yeah. Gemini Roy, even with Gemini Roy, it's like his students right. used to copy his best works, and whoever made the work which was like closest to the original was uh, awarded. You know that yeah, this is amazing work. So there has been that whole tradition where we are taught by rote, you know, where you're like, okay, these are the things you need to just like master this. If you can make this the exact same way, you're sorted, right? Or that's like an accomplishment. So that is something that has been there in the Indian tradition. Now that's because it's been it's all evolved over thousands of years, over so long, you cannot just get you cannot change that, you cannot turn the wheel around, you cannot be like, oh it'll go away immediately. You know, right. it will take its time. It's just like the bronzes, you know, when you, the Chola bronzes are the original bronzes yeah. which are being reproduced till today and not in a bad way, you know, it's not that they're trying to, it's not forgeries, it's that is the original that they have in front of them and they're just, it's, uh, they're just like repeatedly it's trying it's to talk. And Simil similarly with the miniature art. Well, in the where I live because the art market is so driven by the tourist trade, mm -hmm. there are a lot of artists. Yeah. Of various qualities. Exactly. I know exactly, 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 exactly what you're talking the, about. The person I used to rent from was a colonel of the Indian Army. He went to one of the local like framing shops and uh -huh. he saw he saw an original drawing of a tiger that he really liked. Right. And I said, You should buy it, Colonel, buy it for your house. Uh -huh. And then you know, then, no, no, I don't think how much is it? Oh, and it was like ten thousand rupees. Right. It was very little. Right, right. And then like no, no, and then as soon as we got out back in his car he said no, I can find another artist to draw the same thing cheaper. For two thousand. Yes, yeah, 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 like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very sad. That happens all the time. So we will see that. We, know, we see that across the board. Mm. That happens everywhere. Also, having said that, with your with the Delphi urban artists, at times when some when one thing starts selling, they just keep on repeating that again and again and again. Yeah. You know, they don't break the mold. They're not. In fact, with that, I have a. I often tell them that you know now that you're even financially secure, you've made enough money, so at least you should be experimenting and doing different things. Yeah, I'm thinking of one artist right now. I'm, I'm thinking that lots of names pop in my head. Seen, you've seen one spotted pumpkin. You've seen all. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No. But you have polka dots. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so they're internationally also. Well, it's like what sells is just keep churning it out again and again and again. And you're talking about someone making millions. So it's like when those people are not, those artists are not able to restrain themselves where they're charging millions, then what are we talking about our traditional and tribal artists? So you know, this, this is really another, survival is difficult. We try to keep these for 20 minutes and this is beginning to run long. So right. I'm just going to let you talk about whatever you want to talk about right. for the end. Okay. So I'll give you five minutes to so, speak. So, uh, so the other thing, uh, so I was saying that you know it's important for us to bridge the gap between the urban and the uh, indigenous artists. So keeping that in mind, last year we did a show, we did an exhibition wherein we had five upcoming artists from the tribal scene, from the tribal traditional scene, and five upcoming artists from the contemporary, you know, your MS Parodas and Delhi right. College of Art actually. So, which was very interesting, and I, I, we got a really good response in the sense that people really appreciated it, the fact that all these artists were coming together on a common platform. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, the year before that, and sorry, in 2018, uh, we had an exhibition which was uh, uh, which had three artists in it: Santosh Kumar Das, who's a Madhubani mm -hmm. Mitra, yeah, yeah, yeah. there was Olivia Fraser. Yeah, Catherine Myers was involved in that. No, Catherine Myers was the Katie Labs. Uh, Lashley 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 Lashley. Yeah, she curated the show for okay. Katrin Myers curated Santosh Kumar Das' solo show uh, that happened in January this year. So in that show we had Santosh Kumar Das, we had Tashito, the Italian artist, and we had Olivia Fraser. Yeah. So it was like a very interesting mix it of nice artists. Mix, it was right. a very, very interesting mix. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were supposed to be in that show. Right, I know I can find <laughs> because of my contractual <laughs> obligations. 
<laughs> See, that's how artists get tied up. Uh, <laughs> Current artists. There's, there's pros and cons to that. Uh, that is, is the so, yeah, so we had these shows. Yeah, so, you know, so we got a really good response on these shows where we felt. So, you really don't want people to think of you as just a tribal art. So when I'm not, because I'm not that. Okay. I'm not that. And. Uh, but you have a passion for it. I have a, no, like, absolutely, and it's a major. And it is a part of my programming in a big way, as it is. You know, it's not that it's not. It's a, uh, and you know, like I have worked with in the contemporary side of things, and uh, you know, we've had solo shows of like Raghuraj as a photography. Then Vicky Roy is a very young photographer right, right, right. who I've been working with for the last ten years. You know, uh, he got an opportunity to photo document the reconstruction of the World Trade Center in New York. Mm -hmm. That was something that was uh, I, like you know, we had nominated him for that award. And we've been working with him ever since we did a solo, uh, two solo shows of his. And then uh, there's Abhishek Singh, who is uh, essentially a graphic artist from NID Ahmedabad, who now lives in New York, and he does a lot of work on Indian mythology. So we've been working very closely with him as well. So I think I better cut it, because I think we're getting more. All right. I don't know, I don't have a stopwatch. Sure, sure. Think. But Anubhav. Thank you for talking Thank you. with me. This is Evil O. Watsuatsuatsuo <laughs> from Ojas Gallery in New Delhi. Thank you so much. Visit it sometime. It's a beautiful place. Thank you. Thank you.